Hello everyone, it's Makeda Valletta, also known as The Body Scientist. And in case you're unfamiliar with me, I am an exercise physiologist, exercise and sports science, sports nutritionist, holistic nutritionist, and um, I've been doing this for like 15 plus years, okay? And I'm, I do a lot of independent research. Um, my approach to nutrition is about is uh, traditional foods, local foods, sustainable agriculture, consuming foods that have produced healthy uh, people for generations, right? And so right now I'm in, I'm in Madrid, Spain. Um, today is November 6th, but ever since October 20th, I went to London, I went to Amsterdam, I went to Paris, and now I'm in Madrid. I was supposed to go to Milan, but I missed that flight due to the difference in travel rules in Europe that I did not know it caused me to miss it so I stayed in London longer so I will be back in Europe next year and I want to explore some more um, so I can dig deeper and so as a researcher I know that you can't generalize a whole country by going to one city okay you have to go many different places in that country and so my research is not done but I'm just going to talk about some things my observations with the food okay um, now, in London, I'm gonna start with the with the I'm gonna start with the first place I went, which was London. So, um, in London, I was highly disappointed by the food. I remember when I was in college, I had a friend who did a study abroad in London or lived there for the summer working, and I remember her telling me she loved London, but she told me she had the worst. The, the blandest Indian food she had ever had in her life. I remember her telling me this, right? And I kept hearing that the food in London was really bland. Um, so when I went to London, um, I had the same experience, but it was beyond bland. It was really nasty. So the first uh, thing I ate in London, you know, I had Eggs Benedict. I actually had a good Eggs Benedict from where I was staying. Um, and I love Eggs Benedict. Um, but in America, they would give you like potatoes on the side or grits on the side. You know, people say Americans give too much food, and that's true. A lot of American people do give you too much food. Um, not all of America, but a lot of it. People give you too much food. But I felt like in London, in my experience in Europe, period, they don't give you enough food, okay? So um, the, the eggs benedict was good, but there was no side. I remember I ordered some bacon, and the bacon that they brought me in London was like, looked like it was raw. I posted a photo of it on my IG page, the underscore body underscore scientist. Um, it looked raw, and I took a picture of it to post to my IG page, like, does anybody know? Is this, like the, is this just this restaurant, or is this the norm in London? Because I didn't want to complain, because I had heard that in Europe, it's not like America, where like... Um, in America, if you're not happy with your food, they'll take it back or they won't charge you. I've heard that in Europe, that's not the case. You still have to pay for it. And so, like, when I've been in Latin America, usually when I didn't like my food, I just pay for it anyway. I tend not to complain because I don't know how they do in other countries. But in Colombia or Cuba, if you don't like the food, you're not losing that much money, you know. But um, in London, the food was not cheap, okay. So they might charge, like an Eggs Benedict, they might charge what they would charge in the States, but in the States they would give you a whole bunch of potatoes on the side or a side of grits or something. You know, like I need more than just two eggs, right? But it was good. Then um, I had, um, I remember I went to this, now this, this sounds like a bad idea, but I did go to a soul food restaurant in London. And the reason why, well it wasn't even soul food, it was Southern, it was actually Creole, Cajun food from from Louisiana, apparently, even though they had St. Louis barbecue ribs on it, whatever, on the menu. But this place was packed, and I went there because I really wanted to get full. And I felt like every place I went, they were either, they, they were giving me like hardly any food, either it was nasty or it just was too little, right? So I was so hungry, and I was working out when I was in London, because in London, I did find a lot of gyms that had day passes, right? Um, and I don't want to go too long without working out, you know, I've only worked out twice since I've been away and I, I hate that. Like, I really, really hate that. I feel like I'm losing weight and losing strength, right? Um, so, but when I work out, I get even more hungry. So I was starving. So I saw this restaurant, it's called the Blues Kitchen. They had it in Brixton. Brixton is like the black part of, or one of the black areas of London. And they had it in other parts of the city. And, um, I went there and it was totally packed, full of white people. Um, the only black people that I saw in there were the black people who worked there. And then they had like a white band performing horrible music. Like, I'm like, so this is supposed to be like a Southern Louisiana type restaurant. Why don't you get some black performers who were good? 
I don't know. So anyhow, whatever. The atmosphere was nice. It was really packed. I ordered some food and like the menu, like it seemed like they needed to get help from a black American from the South. Okay. Like if you're going to open up a restaurant from another country, if, like if I'm going to open up a Mexican restaurant or I'm going to open up a Chinese restaurant, I don't know, whatever culture, Surinamese, Colombian, I was speaking to somebody from those countries, you know, you need to get training for people from those countries because the size they had, you could look at the menu, it's called the Blue's Kitchen. The size they had was kind of limited. So, you know, um, I had like, I ordered ribs and I haven't eaten ribs in years. Like I really don't really eat ribs anymore. Um, I used to, but that was like the best sounding thing on the menu. Cause I don't want a burger. I'm, I'm not trying to, whatever. Anyhow, whatever. I got St. Louis barbecue ribs and like fries and macaroni and cheese, which to me was also off balance because I don't want potatoes and macaroni and cheese. Like to me, it's one starch and one vegetable, right? Um, but they didn't have any vegetable sides or anything. So it came with fries and then you got to decide what other side you wanted and there weren't any vegetables. I don't remember there being any. And there's lots of vegetables that Americans eat, you know? I don't know. So all I can say is the French fries were absolutely disgusting, okay? And I don't know how you mess up French fries, but they were the nastiest tasting French fries I've ever had in my life. The, the, the barbecue ribs tasted bad. And the macaroni and cheese was simple, how nasty it was. It was dry, powdery, disgusting, horribleness, okay? And uh, they had all these blues artists, you know, Afro-American jazz and blues artists painted on the walls. And I remember thinking to myself, this is simple. Like, these people will be rolling over in their grave. My ancestors are rolling over in their grave. How This is an insult to Afro-American food. I remember thinking that. And I didn't want to pay for it. And it was going to be expensive, you know, but... I didn't eat any of it, and I just told my waitress, and I didn't expect that they would not make me pay for it, but the the manager came by, he was like a light-skinned black guy, probably half white, half black, and um, he asked me if I wanted him to take it off the menu, and I said, yeah, that would be great. And then, I mean, not off the menu, off the bill, not charge me, so I told him that would be great. Um, and then he asked me what was wrong with it, and I didn't want to be mean, because I don't, I don't want to, but I just, was honest, I'm like, this is nasty, like, this does not taste like how it's supposed to taste, I'm like, maybe because I'm, I'm American, I know what it's supposed to taste like, but it was like the worst everything I'd ever had, um, so that was really disappointing. Then, um, I had a Venezuelan arepa, I love arepas from Venezuela and Colombia, and the, the arepa I had was good, but... It was also expensive, and the, it was funny because the place I got it, the, it was totally empty in that place. Um, but it, that that was decent. That was a de decent arepa. Um, and I found a Colombian restaurant in Brixton, in the Brixton Village. Um, and the Colombian restaurant was decent. But because I've been to Colombia, like, Colombian food in Colombia is so much more varied than what you get at a Colombian restaurant. But at the time, that was, like, the best I could find because for me... Like, I need some type of starches. I need I need milk. Like, I need ice cream. Like, for me to feel full, like, I need that. And Spanish-speaking people, at least in the Americas, they have something called batidos or licuados, which is, like, leche y frutas is milk and fruit. Like, it could be, um, it could be, like, mora, which is um, blackberries or fresa or banana or, um, you know, gonabana, papaya. There's different fruit they combine with milk. And I love those, okay? Because for me, milk does my body good. Like, I need milk drinks, okay? So I would drink that at the Colombian restaurant, like two more y leche, more y leche like two of them. And uh, the Colombian food, you know, it was decent, okay? It was like the best thing that I had found, okay? Um, but then I remember going to this other, like this, I wanted a really good breakfast, okay? Like breakfast is my favorite meal. I could eat breakfast in the afternoon, you know, I don't usually eat it first thing in the morning, but I love an American breakfast especially because I love eggs, and a lot of people eat eggs in the morning, but we have eggs, we have potatoes, we have bacon, we have eggs, we got grits, we got bacon, some people eat sausage, I'm a bacon person, you know, you can put all kinds of things in your omelet, you can have fish and grits, you can have shrimp and grits, you know, there's so many different things, you know, to me pancakes is not breakfast, that's like dessert, that's like cake, right? So I went to this breakfast place and the menu was so disgusting sounding. Like, you know what? I have to read you some of the things. Damn, what was the name of this place? Oh, God. Uh, because people don't believe me. My mom didn't believe me. Um, um, my mom didn't believe me how nasty it was. And then I had to read her like some of the stuff on this menu. Um, 
hold on a minute. Andrew Dillon, I need to, I need to um, find this place. I'm sorry I didn't pull it up beforehand because um, the combinations of shit on this menu was so nasty. Like, you'll get an idea of what I mean. Um, because the thing, ugh. Oh, that's the other thing. As as I look for as I look for this menu, I'm just gonna tell you that um, an English breakfast is absolutely disgusting. Okay, <laughs> for English, just just Google an English breakfast. Okay, what they eat is I'm looking at a picture of it right now. Well, they eat um, eggs with some kind of black pudding thing. I don't know what that black thing is. Um, I'm not sure if it's blood sausage. I don't know. Um, these nasty looking baked beans and tomato sauce. Um, these grilled tomatoes and these disgusting looking sausage. Like, I don't know if it's bone marrow too. Even a bone marrow is healthy, but it looks nasty. Just Google an English breakfast and you'll see. You want to throw up. Um, but hold on a minute. Let me find, uh, like the, the, um, Oh, this is what an English breakfast is. Sausage, egg, bacon, bubble and squeak. I don't know what bubble and squeak is. Black pudding, beans, tomatoes, and mushrooms. But it's really not good. Um, it's like the food that I had in London traumatized my ass. Darn it, where is this breakfast place? I need to find it because... What was the name of it? Hold on a minute. Um, just give me a second. I should have pulled this up. Oh, the Breakfast Club. Okay, that was the name of the place. It was called the Breakfast Club. Now, let me let me let me let me read you some of the things on the menu. Hold on. The Breakfast Club. Okay. You're gonna want to puke. Okay. It's like London remixes food in a horrible way. Okay, Chicago. My, I'm from New York, but I currently live in Chicago. Chicago remixes food in the best way, okay? Chicago is the best food city in America, and frankly, it's the best food place I've been to anywhere that I've been. Um, and I will, I will bet anybody money on that shit when it comes to Chicago. Um, okay, so now, this place is called The Breakfast Club. You can all, you can Google it yourself, but I'm going to, I'm going to read you some of the things on this menu. Um... Hold on. So as I continue to look for it, oh wait, okay, hold on, view sample menus. Okay, where is it? Now that I need to find this, now that, hold on a minute. Oh. Now that I need to find it, it doesn't want to just pop up. Okay, here it is, finally. Okay. All right. Hmm. Okay, some of the examples. Okay, so what I had, I had the Mexican breakfast. Now, if you can't tell already, I love Mexican food, right? But I know that London's not a good place to eat Mexican food, but there's a lot of kind of people in London too, though, you know? I didn't expect there to be Colombians in London. I didn't, but there were, you know? So, I mean, I ordered this Mexican breakfast because it was the best sounding thing on the menu. Now, let me read you what's on this menu. Okay, first, um, you got the full Monty, which is bacon sausage, dormines, black pudding, homestyle potatoes, creamy mushrooms, beans, tomato, eggs, and toast. Okay, that must be English breakfast. That isn't, I don't know, creamy mushrooms? Okay. And black pudding? I don't know. Then, um, I had Mexican eggs, which was chorizo, or, it was chorizo, Fried chicken or jackfruit. I don't know where the jackfruit comes from. With tortilla, tomato, salsa, guacamole, refried beans, cheddar, and sour cream. But if you look at my IG page, the underscore body underscore scientist, you'll see I posted a picture of that Mexican breakfast. It sounds good, but it looked disgusting and tasted even worse, okay? Because the, the so-called chorizo they had was not chorizo. Chorizo is a certain kind of sausage from Mexico, like, or from different Spanish-speaking countries. The chorizo they had, you know, they chorizo is sausage, but it's a particular kind of sausage. They just had some type of English sausage, the same nasty English sausage they eat with breakfast. Then the tortillas were like crackers, okay? Then the tomato salsa tasted like radishes. It was so fucking disgusting, okay? Ugh. Okay, that was the best sounding thing. Now, here's the rest of the stuff on this menu. 
you got squash, sweet corn, and onion fritters, okay? Now, this is squash, sweet corn, and onion fritters. It's made with tomato chutney, whipped feta, spinach, and fried egg, okay? Now, I don't know what whipped feta is. I know what feta is. I love feta, but whipped feta and tomato chutney. And then squash, sweet corn, and onion fritters. I don't, I don't understand that. Then you have... Um, Hold on a minute. Give me a second. Give me a second. Hold on a minute. Oh. Chorizo and potato hash, right? So this says chorizo, chorizo, poached egg, peppers, southern greens. Like, what are southern greens? What does that mean? You know, what is what are southern greens? Because are you talking about collard greens? Are you talking about mustard greens? Are you talking about kale? Are you talking about spinach? Like, what is southern greens, right? Okay, so chorizo, poached egg, peppers, southern greens, onion, whipped feta, okay, don't know what feta is again, and cracked wheat. What is cracked wheat? Then, okay, you know what, I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna keep going through this because, oh, then you got butternut squash, no, butternut Shakushka Benedict. I don't know what shaku, shakshuka, shakshuka, butternut shakshuka Benedict. I don't know what shakshuka is, um, but it's shakshuka, avocado, poached eggs, Greek yogurt, harissa hollandaise. I don't, I don't, I don't understand what that is. That doesn't sound good to me though. Um, I don't know. Like, I'm not even going to just go through, like, because I had it, I had the menu. It's too hard looking at it on the computer while I'm doing this video. I took photos of it. Um, and I remember I took photos of it, and I had sent it to my mother so she could see what the hell um, I was talking about. Like, they got cauliflower fritters and chimichurri. Um, that doesn't sound good to me. Then they had, they had... Fried chicken and waffles. Oh, yeah, with macaroni and cheese. Okay, yeah, this is it. Fried chicken and waffles with macaroni and cheese and pickles, jalapenos, pepper sauce, and maple syrup. Now, does that sound good to you? Does that sound good to you? Chicken, ch Fried chicken and waffles with mac and cheese, pickles, jalapenos, pepper sauce, and maple syrup. Then there's fish cake. Florentine, smoked haddock and spring onion fish cake, poached egg, southern greens, cracked wheat, and hollandaise. Like, what is that? You know? Um, then they have bubble and squeak with vegan bacon, a butternut squash, courgette and potato, bubble and hot cranberry sauce, and vegan bacon. That doesn't sound good to me. Like, all this sounds nasty. Um, then they got pumpkin, poached eggs, cracked wheat, whipped feta, sprouts, radish, and tomato breadcrumbs with a lemon dressing. Now, does that sound good to you? This is called Good Day Bowl, okay? Pumpkin, poached eggs, cracked wheat, whipped feta, sprouts, radish, and toasted breadcrumbs with a lemon dressing. That that sounds like I want to throw up, okay? like So I'm not going to keep going on with the nasty English combinations, okay? So then I had some Ethiopian food in Brixton. There are a lot of Africans uh, in um, London. People kept saying, oh, eat, eat Caribbean food, eat um, African food. Now, the only African food I'm really a fan of is Ethiopian food. Like, I'm not really a huge fan of African food. Um, I'm also not a huge fan of Caribbean food. It's okay, but I'm not a huge fan of it. Like, unless it's Haitian food, right? But, because first of all, I love dairy. I love people that use cheeses and creams, and I love corn, you know? And so, South America, Central America, North America, we use those things. The Caribbean, not so much. You know, Asia, not so much. Let's talk about India. But I did have some Ethiopian food. And it was the worst Ethiopian food I've ever had in my life. Now, I've had Ethiopian food in New York, in D.C., in L.A., in the Bay, you know, Chicago. I've never had bad Ethiopian food, okay? Some of the best Ethiopian food I've had has been in D.C. and in Chicago. 
But I've never had bad Ethiopian food. Well, in New Orleans, it was the worst Ethiopian food I ever had. The Ethiopian food in New Orleans is not that good. But the Ethiopian food in London was made me want to vomit, and it was so expensive. That's the thing. The food in London was not good. It was expensive, or it was too little, and it was expensive, okay? Um, so then... I remember that night I was so hungry after I left the Ethiopian place. So I'm looking and I'm like, okay, I really wanted some Mexican food. The Mexican food makes me feel full. Ethiopian food makes me feel full and good. And so does American food, right? And so, okay, so I go, I, I look and it says, is it Mexican restaurant right around the corner in Brixton? It says on the menu, <laughs> on the menu they wrote, we have a certified Mexican in the kitchen. That's what they wrote. So, um, I go there and there was a Mexican woman in the kitchen. There was a white man who, you know, greeted me and white people who worked. There was a small little restaurant. There was a Mexican woman in the kitchen who ordered three tacos. The menu, the menu was very limited and those tacos looked beautiful, but they tasted disgusting. And I, I posted a picture of that on my other IG page. Um, it was really nasty, you know, and this little ass margarita and the restaurant closed at 1030 at like 1010. I asked for another margarita. They were like, oh no, we're the Kitchen is closed. I'm like, but you close at 10.30. Oh, yeah, but we close the kitchen early. But I'm like, what does the kitchen have to do with you making me another margarita? Like, so it was just super annoying because I felt like food there was really expensive and it was not good, okay? It just was not good. Nobody could, could, can convince me that the food in London was good. I was there for a week, okay? And food was my mission. And I'm fucking hungry, okay? Even the Starbucks. Like, I'm not a fan of Starbucks, but I do need caffeine every day. And I get my caffeine in the form of tea. I like matcha tea, and I like uh, yerba mate, right? So I go to Starbucks and I'm on the road because it's the one place I know where I can find matcha, which is what I drink. I don't like coffee. I don't want coffee. Um, and so there was Starbucks in London, but the matcha, matcha is a green tea powder that comes from Japan. The matcha that they had was disgusting. It was. It did not taste like how it tastes in America. Or when I got with the Starbucks in Colombia, Starbucks in Colombia tasted like it is in the U.S., and um, I'm thinking Starbucks is an American company. If it's a chain, it should be some consistency, but no, no. Then apparently, like, I mean, the matcha in London was so nasty. It was horrible. And apparently half and half milk or, you know, it was an American thing because I've never, they didn't have that in Colombia and they didn't have it in London. Nobody has half and half. They just have whole milk, you know. Um, and I love my fat. I love, like, I get my matcha with half whole milk, half, half, and half. Um, when I'm in the States and I get my raw milk and my raw cream from the from the farm, that's what I use. You know, I like my fat and cream. Couldn't really get that. Then in London, um, when I went to the supermarkets, it was highly processed foods. Highly processed. Way more than in the U.S. Um, the thing about London in terms of access to food, there were lots of, like, little corner store type places like we have in New York except in London those like little corner stores they they um mostly sold alcohol and soda like they did not have any good juice like in the U.S. like I love Simply Lemonade I'm my family being from Florida people talk about Florida and orange juice but in my family lemonade was what ruled um from Florida and so I love good lemonade and out of the lemonades you could buy in the supermarket Simply Lemonade is the only one I like you know but Simply Lemonade is pretty decent if I'm in New York, I get the ginger ale called Bruce Cost Ginger Ale, and now you can find it in D.C. and Whole Foods. It's made in Brooklyn. You can see the ginger floating around in it. It's made from good ingredients. Um, you could get those kind of things. You can get coconut water, watermelon juice, all that in, like, bodegas and delis in New York City. But the little corner stores in um, London didn't have that kind of stuff. They didn't have anything that I would buy to drink. Everything they had had chemicals in it, had artificial colors in it. Um, I found they had pints of haagen but it's funny because the haagen flavors that they had in London was completely different than the haagen flavors that we have in the U.S. Like, they had strawberry cheesecake. That sounded good. Um, they had some kind of chai latte ice cream haagen which we I've never seen in the States. But when I tasted it, it didn't taste good. And when I looked at the ingredients in the back, they put um, condensed skim milk, right? Now, in the States, they don't put condensed skim milk in the, in the ice cream. If you look at hot, like haagen strawberry in the States, it will say cream, skim milk, um, sugar, egg yolks, strawberries, or whatever. If there is, I think there's egg yolks in it. Um, when you make ice cream, it's ideal to not use skim milk. Like, ideally, you want to use whole milk, you know, cream and whole milk. But, because um, skim milk is not so great for you. 
But the good thing about Haagen Dazs in the States, they don't add additives. Because a lot of times when people use skim milk in their ice cream, they put additives in it to make up for what you're missing from the fat. Because the fat gives ice cream a certain consistency. So if people use skim milk, they start putting guar gum and carrageenan and xanthan gum in the ice cream. Those are toxic. You don't want that in the ice cream. Haagen Dazs in London, it didn't have those additives. But it just had condensed skim milk, and it made it taste nasty. Like, it did not have the same taste as haagen in the States. And I'm like, okay, but this is an American company. Can't you just be consistent? No. Lots of fast food, lots of KFC, lots of McDonald's. Um, I don't eat McDonald's. I haven't eaten that since I was, like, since, like, 1999. But I did notice, like, in ads, they had different things, like jerk chicken sandwiches in McDonald's in London. I don't think that we have jerk chicken sandwiches in McDonald's in America. But I don't pay attention, but I don't think we do, okay? Um, but yeah, like, when you move around London, the train stations, um, there's a lot of access to food because there's, like, a lot of, like, deli-type little stores inside the train stations and around. But it's just every time I stopped and went in them, I really didn't find a lot of quality stuff. There was a lot of, um, like, prepackaged fruit, which some people think is healthy. But to me, like, fruit is, is only good if you're eating, like, fresh in season organic fruit that's not GMO and sprayed up with chemicals and fruit is more healthy when you're eating it with a fat so like fruit and cheese or fruit and yogurt fruit and cream or something because you extract more nutrition from the fruits and vegetables when you have a fat with it okay this is really important that's why you have peaches and cream berries and cream strawberries and cream bananas and cream right or people put butter with their spinach butter on their sweet potatoes you know, like you need that fat to actually make it more nutritious. When you're eating fruit, just fruit, raw fruit by itself, it's really not that nutritious, right? And then it's prepackaged and cut up. I saw a lot of prepackaged sandwiches. Um, like in a city like New York, we have a lot of delis that make fresh sandwiches. I haven't seen that anywhere else in the States, though. I haven't seen that anywhere else that I've been, period. But in New York, and I don't even eat deli sandwiches in New York. But in New York, all throughout New York, delis and bodegas, they make fresh sandwiches. Um, you don't see prepackaged sandwiches everywhere, but in London, everything was prepackaged sandwiches, prepackaged this, very processed food. I could not find good quality stuff in London, okay, good quality ingredients. I went to a farmer's market. Um, I found a man who has raw milk, but he didn't have it then. He said that he only has it sometimes. It would be six weeks before he had it again, and that and there's not many farmers in London who are even doing raw milk anymore. But then in other parts of Europe, raw milk is abundant. Okay, which kind of makes me want to go to Ireland because I want to see what that's about. I love good quality milk. Um, despite what some people might think about milk, like I have videos um, on my YouTube page, The Body Scientist 81, where I talk about raw milk and health properties of it. I feel like it's time for me to do new videos on that topic. But raw milk from grass-fed cows or grass-fed healthy animals is a superfood. Um, not, I'm not talking about homogenized, pasteurized milk from the food industry. That's not what I'm talking about. And that's what most of you have drank. Um... So I felt like in the States, you know, I mean, London's one city, so I don't want to compare a city to a whole country. A lot of people do that. They go to a city and they compare it to a country. So London is one city. So um, when I compare it to another city, like New York City, which they're both on the same level because they're both boss cities, you know, London is a financial capital, even more so than New York, which I did not know. So much money comes through there. Like, New York has 8.5 million people. I think London got, like, 9 million, you know? Um, so, I feel like in New York, I had access to better quality stuff, like full-fat yogurt. Like, I couldn't find full-fat yogurt in London. All the yogurt in London was, um, all the yogurt in London was, like, low-fat and fat-free, which also is not good. And I talk about that in other YouTube videos of mine. So, go back and look at other YouTube videos so you can understand why low fat, non fat dairy is bad for you. You know, that's a processed food. You need the fat. You need the fat to digest the protein. You need the fat to get your fat soluble vitamins, vitamins A, B, I mean, vitamins K, E, D, and A, which is the second half of my name. My name is Makeda. So my name is M A K E D A. That second part, K E D A, those are the fat soluble vitamins, okay? And you need fat to absorb them, particularly animal fat, okay? There is no vitamin A and D in plants. And I, I have videos where I talk about this in depth. I have a whole YouTube video where I talk about vitamin A, whole YouTube video where I talk about vitamin D. So go look them up. Um, I'll try to put the links below. Um, but look them up. And you'll understand. So the thing is, like, British people, they look... 
they don't look good. You know, like the white British people. I'm not talking about the Africans who might be like first generation because their parents and grandparents didn't eat that British food. They were eating African food, okay? But um, pe white people in Britain are like some of the worst looking white people I've ever seen. Like their facial structures, their bones, their everything about them looks fucked up. And that's what happens when you eat a lot of processed foods. People who grow up eating processed foods have, especially, sometimes you might you might have grown up eating processed foods, but your parents didn't. So because you get your, your nutritional stores from your parents, you, it might not have fucked you up that much, right? But if you then eat processed foods and have a kid, then your kid might have some issues, okay? It's called nutritional, nutritional degeneration, okay? Look up the book, Nutritional Degeneration by Weston A. Price, okay? Look that book up and read it and you will understand what I'm saying, okay? So London did not have good food quality to me, okay? And I expected that it would have better food quality. And sometimes it's funny when you idealize a place in your mind, okay? Um, but honestly and truly, I could find better food in any American city. Not only did the food taste nasty in the stores, I mean in the restaurants, but the food options in the supermarkets were very low quality. Very, you know, um, not processed. I mean, highly processed stuff. Also, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm going back to the States tomorrow. I'm looking forward to that. But just now when, I'm, when I flew to Madrid, I lost my bag of liquids with my hair oil, my, I have a cocoa butter, coconut oil mixture. Um, I have shea butter, thank God. I took my shea butter and put it in my chet bag. Um, but I haven't, this whole time that I've been traveling, I haven't seen any place to buy shea butter or cocoa butter or any of those things. Um, I was in Brixton, which is the black part of London. And it's funny, they have like Atlantic Avenue. There's Atlantic Avenue in Brooklyn. It's very Caribbean. But if you go to Atlantic Avenue in Brooklyn or Flatbush, um, more so Flatbush, I'm trying to think about, yeah, in Atlantic Avenue, if you're in Flatbush, um, you could find cocoa butter and like, you could, tons of people sell that. I mean, not cocoa butter, shea butter. Cocoa butter is hard to find, but shea butter, you can find it everywhere. Now, it's like, I haven't seen, I didn't see that in London anywhere. So I'm like, and, and honestly, no offense to anybody, but the black people in London, they really look like they need to moisturize their skin. A lot of their skin look really, really dry, really dry. So I'm like, what are they using, you know? What are they using? Regular lotion? Because I think most of the black people in London are African, and my African friends in America never use shea butter. Like, all the Africans, I have a lot of Africans. I've had African ex-boyfriends, African friends, whether they're from Ghana, from Nigeria, from Cameroon. All my African friends just use regular lotion. You know, they don't use shea butter. It's the black people over here that's like, oh, give me the shea butter, you know. But in shea butter is the shit, especially when you live someplace where it's cold. That's what keeps your skin intact, right? So I just didn't, I couldn't find those things when I was in London. And then they're supposed to be known for their tea, you know, because of their the tea trade. But I had, I went to a tea place in the farmer's market. I had some chai tea from fresh uh, tea herbs. Wasn't that great. I've had better tea in New York City. I had better tea in, in Paris, in Amsterdam, okay? And I had way better tea. Um, so to me, from what I've seen thus far from London, I, 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 I couldn't stand the food. The food traumatized me. Like I was so sick and hungry by the time I left. It was like a nightmare. I kept thinking, I don't know how people live here. I, uh, people, I, I, I really want to say nobody can convince me that London has good food. I just don't believe it. Okay. But, and then the times I did have good food, like I did have a good eggs, but I did, but the bacon was raw and there was no size, no potatoes or anything. And the shit was expensive. So London gets two thumbs down to me when it comes to food. Now, if somebody knows London, because I may go back there to teach a class, or maybe not to London, but to another part of England to teach a class. Um, but if anybody, so I may pass through London again. I was interested in the dance scene in London. Um, the black dance scene, didn't get to explore that. Heard they had dope clubs. But if anybody knows London and you... You, you really feel like you know where you could tell me to get some good food? And don't tell me an area, okay? Tell me a particular restaurant where you really bet that the food is good. Then please post it below my YouTube video because I'm searching. But um, I didn't find that in London, okay? But I'm open to any suggestions so I could keep doing my research. Maybe I was there for a week and I feel like if I was someplace for a week and everything I ate was nasty or not enough. Oh, that's the other thing. I had the worst tapas. Now, I'm not even into Spanish food from Spain where I'm at right now. It's overrated, okay? But tapas, okay? I have the nastiest tapas I've ever had in my life. 
also in London, okay? So Spanish tapas, you know, Mexican, Ethiopian, American, English food that I had, was okay? Not good. No bueno. But on the fitness side, there was a lot of independent gym. I mean, a lot of gyms where, as a traveler, where you could go and work out and get a day pass. So I really appreciated that. Um, and uh, I talked to a trainer. There was a lot of black men trainers, but you kind of see that everywhere. Like, black beefy dudes do well in the fitness industry. Everybody wants to train with a big black beefy dude. So you had trainers like that in the gyms. And I talked to one uh, trainer, black man, and he was telling me that, now, if somebody's from London, and I'm wrong, correct me. But he told me that in London or in England, I don't know if it's the whole country, where, like, um, they have levels of trainers, right? And he told me it was a national thing where you have to, there's certain requirements to be level one, two, three, four trainer. Now, in America, um, they have that in gyms. Certain gyms might have their own system of levels. But it's not a national thing. There's no national qualifications for being a trainer in the States, which is a problem. And I talk about that in some of my YouTube videos about how to find a good trainer and being aware, be aware of, uh, you know, fraudulent trainers because there's a lot of people in the States that work in the fitness industry that are all show, okay? They don't know what they're talking about or doing, and you have to be careful with that. And I have videos where I talk about that. Um, so I'm in this video talking about London. Um, in my next video, I'm going to talk about um, what I discovered in Amsterdam, okay? Because, or I'll be talking forever. So thanks for listening. If you have any comments, please share it. Please share the video. Please check out my other videos on health and nutrition on um, my YouTube page, The Body Scientist 81. And be sure to follow me on IG at the underscore body underscore scientist. Okay, people. Have a great day. Bye.